aliens. That's what a lot of my viewers ask about when I do these satellite radio and communication experiments. They want to know, can I find UFOs? Can I find alien life? Well, I haven't found any of these guys just yet, but I did come across an interesting anomaly in one of my satellite microwave scans recently. As I've shown in some prior episodes, I modified an RV satellite dish into a microwave imager. It basically scans back and forth, reads the signal strength at each dish location, and turns that into a heat map or bitmap of the relative microwave signal strength over the area that the antenna can see. This is somewhere in between a microwave camera and a scientific imager. It makes a nice pretty picture that's easy for humans to interpret, but it's not very high resolution and it's certainly not fast. It takes between three to four hours for this particular little antenna to do its full scan. Since this dish is tuned to receive TV satellites, it's very good at detecting TV satellites in the sky, and I can make these nice pretty pictures of the geostationary Clark Belt. We're essentially looking at the belt of geostationary television satellites orbiting the Earth. We're in the northern hemisphere, so we're looking down at this geostationary belt, which circles the equator, and it appears as essentially an arch in the sky. I've also done some other microwave pictures uh, using basically background radiation. So I've taken an image of my house using reflected microwave radiation. The satellites are behind me in this picture, so Partly, I'm using the satellite signals to paint the house in microwaves, uh, kind of like light painting with a normal camera. And I've used the little imager inside the house to find things like radiation leaks in my computer. I've got Wi-Fi or other microwaves spilling out of the computer there in the corner, and you can easily see it in this frequency. Anyway, I took the microwave imager out to my friend's off-grid property, Sandland, and Sandland isn't super far away from my house, so I knew that the image of the sky was going to be very similar. I'm going to be able to see most of the same satellites from mostly the same orientation, so the picture isn't going to look super different, but I figured I'd give it a shot anyway. So as part of the Sandland space program, we're doing some radio astronomy here, or Technically, we're just looking at KU band satellites. We've got the microwave imager, we've got the cyberdeck system. So this is gonna take three hours to complete. Hopefully it won't rain in those three hours. We're gonna leave it here in the upper field and see what it comes up with. So we're gonna do all the default settings on this. So something I noticed in this scan from Sandland is this weird little ellipse, oval, saucer shape in the uh, upper right. What is that? It seems to be something that's giving off microwave radiation in the KU band, about 12 gigahertz. That's what these TV satellites are mostly sending down. That's what this dish is mostly picking up are the 12 gigahertz beacon frequencies. This little oval shaped object had to be something sitting relatively still compared to the dish, compared to the surface of the Earth, because again, this dish takes three to four hours to do a scan. It's basically taking a super long time exposure image of the sky. Anything moving quickly, a person walking in front of the imager, a bird flying past, a plane is not going to show up on there. Now this odd little oval could be um, some kind of reflection from within the dish, some kind of a side lobe. You'll notice around each of the satellite signals, there's kind of a halo, and that's essentially a side lobe reflection. As the dish turns, it's getting the satellite most strongly when it's pointed directly at it, but as it turns off to the side, it does get a little bit of signal bouncing around in there due to the geometry of the dish, so it gets those kind of rings, essentially lens flares around each satellite signal. This thing up in the top, I don't think is quite the same because I've run several scans like this, again, from very similar locations, and I've never gotten uh, an artifact or anomaly quite like that. In fact, I ran this scan from Sandland before. The scan crashed. I lost the raw data from that scan, but I did get kind of the backup thumbnail image. Uh, you can see that here. I will compare that side by side with this latest one with the anomaly. You'll notice the anomaly shows up even in the thumbnail preview for the scan, but it doesn't show up and nothing quite like it shows up in this other thumbnail from that failed scan. So what do we have here? What is this little saucer shape in the image? Um, I made this mildly clickbaity title because, yeah, people always ask in the comments, can you find aliens? If there's extraterrestrial life out there, my gear is probably not going to find it. It is far too amateur. It is far too redneck. It is definitely made out of zip ties and duct tape. So we need to find a more down-to-earth or at least human-made explanation for this phenomenon. 
now what else can we deduce about this little oval? It's not in the geostationary Clark belt, so it's not a traditional geostationary TV satellite. It's not a low Earth orbit or a medium Earth orbit satellite because those would be moving too quickly to really show up on this image. It's not an aircraft or a bird for the same reason. It's probably not a reflection. It's got to be something in space at an inclination out of geostationary orbit sending out microwave signals. Now, one thing I thought of was a transfer orbit. Before you get a satellite into geostationary orbit, it usually goes through a couple intermediate stages. It gets launched, it's in an elliptical orbit that goes way out to apogee and then back in close to perigee to the Earth. Over a few weeks, that satellite or a small rocket stage attached to it fires thrusters, basically increases the circularity of the orbit until the satellite is out at geostationary orbit. When a satellite is on its way out to geostationary orbit, when it's in a transfer orbit, it might not appear in the same band as everything else. Now there were a couple issues with this theory. The only satellite I could find that might be in a transfer orbit at the moment was Echo Star 24. That one is more of a Ka band satellite. It's up in the 28 gigahertz range. It's not as far as I can tell, mostly not KU band. Also, while the satellite's in the transfer orbit, it doesn't really make sense to have uh, the transponders turned on, to have all of the radio microwave transmitters turned on because you're not in the right orbit, your customers aren't gonna be able to see that satellite with a fixed dish, and why waste power sending down signals when it's in the wrong spot? Now, I did find a new website for satellite research, which I think is really cool. I'll throw the link here and I'll throw it down in the description. Some of the other websites I've used, like Into-YO and Stuff in Space, will show you kind of where a satellite is. It'll tell you a little bit about the orbit, but they don't really tell you what the satellite looks like from the Earth. They don't tell you the historic orbit, where a satellite was at a particular time. This other website does some of that, and you can set up a planetarium view for your location for desired time. You can select which satellites you want to know about, and it will place them in your sky view in kind of a simulated view to say, where are those satellites? This is fantastic if you're trying to point a dish at a particular satellite. Dishpointer.com is another good website for that, but it's much more two-dimensional and it's kind of a pain to use because you have to scroll through this giant list of satellites. Anyway, using that in the Sky website, I was able to verify that Echo Star 24 would have appeared below the plane of the geostationary orbit to me at the time I was doing the observing. So we've ruled out that transfer orbit at least for Echo Star 24. Now we also have a couple other satellites that are out of that geostationary plane and we've talked about a couple orbits on this channel before. Geostationary is the one where the satellite basically sits in one spot relative to the Earth. It's still orbiting the Earth but it's orbiting at exactly the same speed that the Earth rotates so the satellite appears to be always over the same place on the Earth's surface. And that's why you can point your satellite dish at it, leave that satellite dish set up, you never have to move it. We also have talked about low Earth orbit satellites which are going over much closer to the ground, much faster relative to the ground so they seem to zip overhead and you only get about a 10 to 15 minutes for any particular ground location where you can see or hear that satellite on the radio. Now there are a lot of other types of orbits and one of them is a geosynchronous but not geostationary orbit. So in that case the satellite is orbiting at the same speed as the Earth rotates but it's inclined so the orbit is kind of at an angle relative to the Earth and not just around the equator. I'll throw up an animation here that I found on Wikimedia. So to a ground observer, this satellite appears to move in a figure eight formation going north and south of the equator. This is a good orbit for sending signals to very far north or very far south locations. Uh, if you're up in northern Alaska, northern Russia, northern Canada, if you're down in Antarctica or the southern ocean, you won't be able to see geostationary satellites very well, especially if you've got mountains in the way. So these geosynchronous satellites with inclined orbits are able to provide some services to very high latitudes. Going back to that In the Sky website and trying to overlay my microwave image, we lined up our weird signal with a couple possible inclined orbit uh, geosynchronous satellites. So these are in about the right position for that signal I was seeing. And those three included uh, USA-134, AMSC-1, and NIMIC-2. Now NIMIC-2 is a good possibility because it's a Canadian TV satellite and far northern Canada is one of the TV markets that would use an orbit like this. However, when I looked on satbeams.com, yet another website that I use for some of this stuff, that website says that NIMIC-2 is retired, so it's probably not sending down active microwave signals. USA-134 is a military satellite, and 
while it's probably sending down microwaves, they're probably not in the TV band because it's not a commercial satellite. It's just doing secret military stuff, whatever. That leaves us with AMSC-1 as the most likely candidate for this UFO. It transmits in the KU band. It was in the right position at the right time when I did this scan. And yeah, I would say what I've probably seen here, this weird little oval shape, most likely is the AMSC-1 telecommunications satellite. Wow, all of that for something relatively boring, I guess? Just, you know, just a regular old commsat. Uh, I thought it was pretty fun, though, to actually go through, do the research on this, try to figure out what things are in which orbits, what could I be seeing, what is this weird blob on my screen that doesn't match all the other blobs I've seen. Yeah, maybe some of you are disappointed that I didn't meet any of these guys, uh, didn't find any real flying saucers, but I thought it was really fun to be able to figure out, or at least with some degree of certainty, what I'm seeing on the screen here. And I think that's really a lot of what people should be doing when they see UFOs, when they hear about UFOs on TV. Think about it critically, do some research, try to figure out what could this phenomenon be. What are the facts you know about it? Like my little blip on the screen here, we know what frequency it's probably transmitting in. We know some things about how it's moving relative to the ground to our observer. And then we can start researching what kind of orbits match that motion, what kind of satellites match that frequency. What things do we know about or can find out about that match what we're seeing? Now, I'm not trying to say that every UFO sighting is fake or a hoax or swamp gas. I don't know what's out there, but I think a lot of them can be explained by natural phenomenon, human phenomenon, or some combination of both. And that's the kind of thing you have to consider when you're trying to figure out, what am I looking at? Now, why haven't I seen this before? Why am I only now seeing this particular satellite out of all the scans I've done? Well, they're not super common for TV, or at least for the TV bands that my dish is programmed for. So my dish is not going to see every satellite up there. It's only going to be seeing things that are transmitting in the right frequency, and that have transponders aimed at my location. A lot of these satellites have pinpoint spots aimed at specific markets. So for example, I might not necessarily see a satellite in a geostationary orbit above Minnesota if its transponders are aimed north of us at Canada. I'd say I think it's a pretty good chance I'm seeing that AMSC-1 satellite, but I don't know for sure. This could be some other satellite. It could actually be a reflection, but I think the most likely scenario is AMSC-1 or something very similar in a similar orbit. I hope this has been a fun little video for everyone. It started as just kind of a throwaway scan over at Sandland, and I didn't think I'd get anything all that exciting out of this microwave scan. But yeah, we were able to find a mystery and then potentially solve that mystery. I think that's kind of fun. Stay tuned to see what else we come up with for the microwave imaging, for the satellite stuff, and of course, all kinds of other silly projects. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.